morning. Anything can happen this morning. Amen. We're in the presence of God. <laughs> We're in the presence of life. You know, when there's life, there can be increase, there can be change, there can be growth. In the presence of life. And we're, we're coming to the giver of life this morning. Not death, no, none of this down, but up, Amen. life. Yes, we're in an atmosphere where there's life, where the Spirit of God is, where there's liberty. Amen. So let's, let's just enter in this morning and, and get all that we can from, from the great source of life this morning. Amen. Let's um, stand and we'll just dedicate this um, service to the Lord. I think we're almost back up to like full capacity. Actually, with maybe a few little extras, one little extra, <laughs> when Brother Adamant's here. Amen. Let's, um, let's just close our eyes this morning and just invite the Lord to feel welcome in our midst. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're just grateful that we can come to the, the author of life this morning. Lord, we were walking in death, Lord, and there was our lives were going down, Lord, with death creeping in on every side, Lord, at every turn there was death, Lord, but the author of life came and met us, Lord, and you gave us a new spirit, you gave us life into our souls, Lord, Lord, and we just desire more of that life this morning, Lord, to change and mold and increase us, Lord, because you're the only one that we can come to in this, in this, in this existence of life, Lord, you're the only, only one that we can come to you for real change, Lord, for real growth, Lord, there's many other options, but none of them work. You're the only one that does, Lord. You're the, you're the giver of life, Lord. So we just desire you to um, dwell with us this morning, Lord. Teach us, mold us, make us, Lord Jesus. May you feel welcome in our midst, Lord. May you bless the songs, bless the singing, bless the preaching, Lord. May every heart be open to you, Lord, that you just feel welcome in our midst, Lord, to move in a powerful way this morning, Lord Jesus. So we just want to commit the service to you, and we just thank you so much, Lord, for paying the price. Lord, of our redemption so that we could have life this morning. Lord, you said, I'm come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Lord, so we come to that abundant life this morning, Lord Jesus. So we just commit the service to you. Bless those that are streaming, Lord, and bless those that still um, are not quite here. We just pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Okay, let's, um, let's sing a song called Come and Dine. The Master calleth, come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. G. Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God have been. He invites his chosen people to come and dine. His manna needs a fee and supplies our every need. Oh, tis sweet to sup with Jesus all the time. Come and dine, the master for it. Come and dine. table all the time. He who fed the multitude turned the water into wine. To the hungry calling now, come and dine. The disciples came to land, thus obeying Christ the man. For the master bought to them, come and dine.
Come and dine. Oh, come and dine. The master calling. Come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. We who fed the multitude and the walk into one. To the hungry calling now. Come and dine. Amen. Amen. You always get satisfied when you dine at the Lord's table. Amen. Brother Joshua, I'm like a sheep and you're like the shepherd, bro. When you lead, I follow. Because <laughs> you're all the words there. You know, <laughs> you know it's interesting thinking of that, that concept about a shepherd because a shepherd always knows things that the sheep don't know. And it's the sheep's job to really just have faith and know that the shepherd's intentions are good and that everything's all right. Amen. Even if it doesn't seem like it's all right or even if you can't see what's happening. I just had a, I've got a little funny story. So that we, there was, we suspected there was somebody snooping around the home last night at, in the early hours, like 1.30. And I said to Melissa, I rang around, oh, 12.30, I said to, rang Melissa and said, do you? Did you hear that there was a car and things? And, and, and she said, no, I didn't, but because it definitely come past the house. And she said, I'm kind of scared. You know, like, can you, can you come down and, you know, look around? So, so Mr. Survival Man kicked into gear. So I got my torches and this is not America, but I got my gun. Because, <laughs> hey, you're out there by yourself. You know, you, you might come across three or four guys. So I'm, but I'm thinking like I'm not just gonna because there was definitely someone something happening, right? So I thought I'm not just gonna drive down in my car and like spook four guys and like hey, you know, you never know what they're up to. So, so I, I thought I'll creep down. I'll I'll take my torches. I'll have them off and I'll just creep down slowly down the drive with my and I'll, you know, be like a stealth man. <laughs> so she's expecting me to turn up within about five minutes and you know hey everything's alright because she lives down the bottom right out in the country. But I probably took about 30 minutes because I'm just sneaking down. But all the time I could see her house. And I'm always watching her house and I'm sneaking. I stop, I watch her house and I'm just checking there's no one around her house and that. But she's, and I'm thinking, you know, she doesn't know what I'm doing. She's probably worried that I'm not going to come and she's probably thinking, oh, where is he? But she doesn't realize I'm watching her house the whole time. It's all right, you know, I can see her house. Probably hit whoever it is from <laughs> my position, you know. But she doesn't know that. Then I, that's what I thought of the Lord, you know. Often he's watching. We don't know what's going on, but he's watching. He's got it all under control. But everything was all right. <laughs> but the Lord's got everything under control. Amen. Let's, um, let's sing. He's got the whole world in his hands. Let's see. This is a different tempo, please, because the other one's a little bit boring for me. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. got the tiny little baby in his hands he's got the tiny tiny baby in his hands he's got the tiny tiny baby in his hands he's got the whole world in his hands he's got you and me brother in his hands he's got you and me brother in his hands he's got you the whole world in his hand. He's got you and me, sister. In his hand, he's got you and me, sister. In his hand, he's got you and me, sister. In his hand, he's got the whole world in his hand. He's got everybody here. In his hand, he's got everybody here. He's got everybody here in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the.
Amen. Praise the Lord. We believe the Lord. Shout to the north and the south, sing to the east and the west, Jesus is Savior to all, Lord of heaven and earth. Shout to the north. We will shout to the north and the south. One more time, shout to the north. We will shout to the north and the south. Sing to the east and the west. Jesus, Savior to all. Lord of heaven and earth. Verse 1. And sing of the great and glorious King. You are so Shout to the north. We will shout to the north and the south. Sing to the east and the west. Jesus, Savior to all. Lord of heaven and earth. Rise up, woman of the truth. Stand and sing. Shout to 
the north and the south Sing to the east and the west Jesus is Savior to all Lord of heaven and earth Shout to the north We were shout Savior to all. Jesus is Savior to all. Lord of heaven and earth. Jesus is Savior to all. Jesus is Savior to all. Lord of heaven and earth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You can all take your seats this morning. We've got a baby dedication. A new addition to the Mounter family. So I'm going to invite Brother Ben up this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's just sing just as Brother Chris and Sister Sarah, if you want to bring the leader up. Let's just sing, bring them in. I'm so happy this morning in my life as I heard a little leader crying, but praise the Lord, there's life. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, so let's just sing it, shall we? Bring them in. 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 To Jesus. Amen. Aren't you glad you can bring your little ones to Jesus? Before the world gets their hands on them, before the devil does, we can put them in his hands. Amen. So it's a great privilege today to dedicate little Lena Kaylin Mounted to the Lord. You know, I was thinking, you know, you're from different parts of the earth, Sister Cherith, Brother Chris. And Brother Braden would say in, in the unveiling of God, he'd say, like a man building chimes or making chimes, the molder. Each bell has got a ring different from the other. The same materials, but so much iron, so much steel, so much brass, but to give it the ting. Mm. That's the way God did. He bred this one to that one, to this one, to that one, to this one, to that one, until he got exactly what he wanted. And I believe little Lena's got a special ting that the Lord wanted upon the earth, a, a special sound that she had to come by you. But God had in his mind before the foundation of the world that she would be born in this season. And I was looking at her, at her name. I love the meaning of names. I'm sure you've you know, looked as well. And you know, Lena, we know, means light. Kaylin means pure. And Mounta, I was looking at the name Mounta. And uh, it means, of course, a, a Mounta hill. But the suffix ur, uh, when it's attached to a topographical feature, means the dweller at. So this is a, the dweller at the mountain. And I was thinking, you know, as, as Jesus would say in Matthew 5, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And Brother Bram would speak of our future home. He says, in the future home of the heavenly bridegroom, the earthly bride, he says, now you've got the city. See, it's a holy mountain. Nothing shall hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. The city is not a cube, it's a mountain. And the width by the breadth by the height are equal. See, 1,500 miles this way, 1,500 miles that way, 1,500 miles all around and 1,500 miles high. So it's a great mountain like the pyramid. And the city is on the mountain. He says, glory. So here's a dweller. I believe she's going to be a dweller on the mountain. Amen. Amen. That future home. So I pray that she will be a pure light. I know that's your heart's desire too, that she'll be the light of the world. 
We need little ones to manifest this word as well. It's not just old ones, it's, it's, it's little children. Amen. Amen. So, can I hold her? Amen. What a precious little one she is. Amen. Amen. Let's just bow here to the word of prayer, shall we? Gracious Lord Jesus, dear Lord, we thank you for this life. Thank you for the lean of my God. Thank you for bringing her safely into the earth, Lord. Thank you, Lord, before the foundation of the world, Lord, she was on your mind. Lord, as a pure light, my God, to manifest this word to this dying world. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would bless her abundantly as we dedicate her into your hands. Lord, my hands are a very poor substitute to yours, but Lord, you're the same Jesus. So, Father, as children were given to you, O God, you bless them, Lord, so we place little Lena's life, Lord, into your hands. Father, guide her steps, my God. Reveal yourself to her even at this age, my Lord. May she know your presence, my Lord. May she know your voice. Dear God, not just in church, but at home, O Lord. And Father, Lord, when she looks into her parents' eyes, may she see other dwellers at the mountain. Lord, those who are going to dwell in the new Jerusalem, my God. May they see this message put on flesh in them, O God. And Father, may you put such a hunger and thirst in her heart for you, O God. Bless her abundantly, dear Lord. We dedicate her for a life of service. Father, into your hands, Lord, we love you. We thank you for this love gift that's coming to the Mount of Home. Lord, in Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 God bless you, Lena. Amen. God bless us, Jared. Amen. God bless you, Brother Chris. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Liam. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Pass it back over to you, Brother Isaac. Amen. Praise the Lord. Life. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and just sing a few worship songs this morning. Here is love, vast as the ocean, loving kindness as the flood. When the prince of life, our ransom, shed for us his precious blood, who his love will not remember, who can cease to sing his praise, he will never be forgotten throughout his Let's sing here is love one more time. Here is love, vast as the ocean, loving kindness as love. When the prince of life, our ransom, shed for us his precious blood, who his love will not remember. Throughout him eternal day of crucifixion, fountains open deep and wide through the flood gates of God's mercy, full of and gracious time, grace and love. On the mount, on the mount of crucifixion, fountains open deep and wide, through the floodgates of God's mercy, flow to and gracious sign, grace and love like mighty rivers poured in sin. And heaven's peace and 
and perfect justice. Kiss the guilty world in love. Here is love. Here is love, vast as the ocean. Love in kindness as the flood. When the prince of life, our ransom, shed for us his precious blood who his love will not remember who can cease to sing his praise he can never be forgotten throughout him's eternal days who his love time sing I sing sing will sing of my redeemer with his blood he purchased me on the cross he sealed my pardon paid the dead and made me free verse one I will sing of my redeemer and his wondrous love for me on the cruel cross he suffered from the curse to set me free sing oh sing of my triumphant power I'll tell how the victory he giveth over sin and death and hell sing or oh, sing of my redeemer with his blood he purchased me on the cross Pardon, paid the debt and made me 
I will sing of my Redeemer and his heavenly love for me. He from death to life had brought me, Son of God with him to be. Sing, well, sing of my Sing. sing, oh sing of my Redeemer with his blood. He purchased me on the cross. He sealed my pardon, paid the debt, and made me. One more time. Sing, oh sing of my Redeemer. With his blood, he purchased me. On the cross, he sealed my pardon, paid the debt, and made me free. for Jesus one more time
Amen. Isn't that true? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's just um, go to prayer, shall we? Thank you, musicians. Uh, we've got one prayer request this morning. We're going to pray for Brother Daniel Fryho, which of course is Cherith's dad. He's on uh, mission work in Mexico, and he has a bad throat and body aches. Let's pray. You know, the devil's fighting, but our God's won. Amen. Amen. So if you've got a need, you just want to raise your hand to the Lord. Gracious Father, I've got both hands raised this morning unto you, Lord, how we need you today. Lord, I want to thank you that our help truly cometh from you, dear God. Lord, we're just asking, Father, as Lord, we just want to lift Brother Daniel Fry home to your presence by prayer. Father, he sees honor. Lord, he's doing your work in Mexico, my God, to share this end time message, Lord. Father, a bride would be awakened in that place, dear God. But Father, as the devil's, Lord, trying to give him the sore throat and body aches, Lord, I pray, Father, you touch his body. Strengthen him, O oh God. Father, may you, may you heal his throat, Lord. Take the body aches away. Father, give him strength, Lord. Anoint him, Lord, for, for the work there, my God. Father, may you bless him and keep him strong in you, dear Lord. And Father, we just pray, dear God, for every hand that's raised in the building. May you meet every need. Dear Lord, I just pray you'd speak to every life, Father, this morning. And Lord, may you anoint speaker and hearer one more time, Lord. I probably say that every, every service, but Lord, may you do it, Lord. Father, Lord, a man speaking, it's all in vain. It's nothing. But Lord, if you come down, Father, and you speak to our hearts, Lord, and you anoint your word to every life, Lord, then Father, Lord, then you're doing the work. And we want you to do the work, oh God. This is your message, Lord, your bride. So Father, may you come do the work among us, dear God. Bless each one here, my Lord, those who couldn't make it today as well be their portion. Father, in Jesus Christ's name, may you grant it, Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you, Brother Isaac. Thank you, musicians. Amen. Great to have everyone here. Amen. This morning, God bless you. Amen. Great to have the visitors. And yeah, God bless you. Trust you feel at home. And yeah, I think we are pretty much all here. Amen. Amen. After holidays and so on. So Amen. Let's just turn to the scripture, shall we? Let's go to Psalms uh, 46. And I'll just throw it out there. If anyone would like to help on the sound desk or with the words or anything, please see Brother Ed. Amen. You know. Amen. Psalm 46 and verse 1. And we're going to read Psalm 47 too. Uh, Psalm 46. This is the so notice to the chief musician for the sons of Korah, a song unto Alamoth, I don't know if that's me making that noise, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble, therefore will not we fear through, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, there is a river. Amen. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. Amen. God shall help her and that right early. Amen. I'm glad about that timing. The, the heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot and the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the heathen. I'll be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. We'll just continue reading down. This is, a, again, a psalm for the sons of Korah. Oh, clap your hands, O ye people. Shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us. Amen. I'm so glad he chooses it. The, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, Selah. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises unto our God, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing ye praises with understanding. We have understanding in this day. God reigneth over the heathen, he sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God, he is greatly exalted. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless his word. You may have your seats this morning. I want, to, I want to take a, if I could title this, I want to speak about uh, removing the stigma of your past. Now, now, we know the word is eternal, you know, it speaks to all people, all generations, and, um, you know, all scriptures for reproof, for doctrine, for exhortation, you know, all scripture is that. 
But we, but I want you to notice that that there's there's a few of the psalms and they are directed to the sons of Korah, and God is wanting to show us something in this. It's not just God filling up ink on paper, you know. But there is a reason why they are directed to the sons of Korah, or for the sons of Korah. Now. The sons of Korah, we know Korah was one that, that would, would raise up during when, when Israel was going for in, from Egypt into the promised land. He, he, he rose up. He was a man of renown, and, and, he, and he rose up with, with, the, um, you know, um, you know, with Dathan and Abiram and, and the great princes, and they rose up before Moses and you know, with certain of the children of Israel. Now I'm reading Numbers 16. 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. This is Korah. He, he was a famous one in, in Israel. He had great influence. And something moved in his heart that he, he wasn't happy with God's provided way of God speaking directly through Moses, the word of God, to lead them into the promised land. So because of his great influence, they began to speak among themselves, and they had a better idea of doing it. And whenever man has a better idea, there's one thing for sure. It's the wrong idea. God is always right. His word is always correct. Amen. Every time. So, so they rose up and they, they, they rose up before Moses and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And they said unto them, ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them. And the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. So they were actually accusing them. You're actually placing yourselves in this position, but God put them in that position. And so, sure, the whole congregation of ho was holy because God was in their midst. But God placed officers in, in Israel, and Moses and Aaron happened to be the prophet and the high priest. They were placed in those offices. So they were saying, you've lifted yourselves up. But, of course, they didn't. God put them there. And so now Moses, you know, we won't continue reading, but Moses basically said, you know, well, God's going to show you whose side is on whose side. And, you know, if God does a new thing and the earth swallows you up, you'll know whose side that God is on. And they separated themselves from him. The earth swallowed them up and, you know, and, and they all perished. And even Jude would speak about this as the gain sayings of Korah. So these gain sayings are man with a political spirit, political mind rising up against the order of God, trying to take control. Now, this was Korah. Now, the scripture says that, that in Numbers 26 and 11, notwithstanding, the children of Korah died not. So that Korah died, but his children weren't caught up in this, in, this, in this event. But now, imagine the stigma. Your daddy was now part of this rebellion. Remember, in Israel, lineage was everything. They were the son of the son of whoever, you know, so lineage was everything. So there was now a stigma attached to Korah's name. So to be now a son of Korah, what was in the father we know is passed down into the children. So the same attributes are potentially now in the children. So they carried that stigma with them. Now, I remember when I was young, maybe I was Annalise or Lilia's age, and my dad read us from the Bible when we read about the first murder on the earth. Of course, Cain killed Abel. And there was a little boy at my school. I don't know if he was in my class, but I, the next day I went and told him, do you know you're named after the first murderer in the world? <laughs> I know. I didn't have much filter going on. I, I hope I got more of a filter now. <laughs> think before speak. But, you know, imagine if he was, I don't think he was a Christian, but imagine if he was a Christian, he would have now a stigma attached to his name. Yep. You mean I'm named after a murderer? Yes, yes. Yeah, there'll be a stigma attached to it. So now there was a stigma attached to Cora's name. Now, we have a stigma attached to our past. And the devil wants to hold our past against us. It may not be what we've done, maybe what we're, our parents have done, maybe our grandparents, whoever it may be, but there's a stigma attached to sins that people have done, and the devil wants to hold it against you to stop you coming into your God-given God -given place. I mean, we're going to understand our Lord has taken care of it all. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. So now, now so, so the children of Korah died not with the gainsayings of their father, but there was a great stigma, you know, associated with Cora's name. You know, so if, if I told some, some kid at school he's named after a murderer, how do you think they would have been in Israel? Mm. Oh, you're the sons of Cora? You know, because imagine sitting there listening to the Torah being read and you are a son of Cora. And they'd come into numbers speaking about the gang saying of Cora and what Cora did. There'd be a stigma attached to it. You'd feel bad that you're called that way. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Amen. So they would have been living under that condemnation, 
But God don't want us to live under the condemnation of the past. Amen. He wants us free of it. Amen. I mean, because if God don't remember, why should we remember? Amen. If God doesn't hold it against you, why should we hold it against Amen. ourselves? Hallelujah. So Korah now, you know, and, and it's amazing the influence that Korah and Dathan had because after Moses said, well, you know, if God do a new thing and the earth swallow you up, and it did, yet you keep reading down in Numbers 16, it says in verse 41, but on the morrow, all the congregation of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, because, saying, ye have killed the people of the Lord. So they had that kind of influence upon the congregation, even though God supernaturally said, no, they're, they're not speaking for me. The people had it so twisted in their mind, they were God's people. That's how strong the influence was. But now, so here are these sons of Korah, living under this stigma for generations. But there comes a time when the stigma does not remain. Amen. That's why we read, I, you know, that's why I pointed out to you that those, these Psalms are written for the sons of Korah. So God is taking, God is taking David who's king. He's anointed. He's positionally placed in the body. He would prophesy speaking first person of, of Calvary. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? God would so move in his life. He'd, he'd speak first person of future events like he was there. He would begin to prophesy things and they're still coming to pass. And he would use, God would use his lips. I mean, to address the sons of Korah. Hallelujah to say now, this, this word that's being released now, you're going to receive this song and you're going to be anointed. Amen. Hallelujah. To sing forth the praise of God. So what, so what David did now, now I, I'm going to try and slow down. We know that in this day, we have journeyed through a wilderness. The church came out of Egypt. Now we're in the promised land. But there was a wilderness journey. There was fighting. There was all things going on. People wandering around. Lots of sins and things happening. But now we're living in a new day. Where, where even Moses would tell the children of Israel in Deuteronomy 29. And to me it's astounding. He says that, you know, so Deuteronomy is 40 years. They've been in the wilderness for 40 years. They're about to go into the promised land. And he tells Israel, you saw the miracles God did. In Egypt, you saw everything he did for you, yet God has not given you eyes to see or a heart to perceive until this day. So they walked with the pillar of fire. They went across the Red Sea. They were fed manna out of the wilderness. They saw God come down on the, on the tabernacle and all incredible things. They saw God come down on Mount Sinai. They saw all those things, but yet God, but Moses saying, no, you, don't, you didn't understand what was going on, but now you do. And you're about to go in. Hallelujah. And it's the same thing. People in the message have been journeying for 40, 50 years now, but now God is causing the lights to turn on. Where it's more than quotes, more than debates, more than doctrine, but a living reality of a living God and a people, where people are now possessing their inheritance. Amen. We're living in a different hour. Amen. Hallelujah. So now, so, so to me now, you know, the message has always been the same, but, but I believe the potency of it, yes. the reality of it, yes. the potency of the word is so much more richer now because God's given us eyes to see. Amen. We never did it in the first place. Where's the first place? God's thinking. I mean, when he saw you before the foundation of the world, when he would address Job in his trial, where were you? When I laid the foundations of the world, the morning stars shouted for joy. And God's trying to get Job to say, him to realize you were in my thinking, you were there. Before, before there's ever a molecule upon the earth, you're in me. Hallelujah. And that's why when the prophet said you never did it in the first place. Well, where's the first place? God's thinking of you before the foundation of the world. Amen. So if he saw me rejoicing, hallelujah, I want to manifest that. Amen. Amen. Why should we? You know, I'm not going to let a rock cry out in my place. And it's not shouting for the sake of shouting. It's shouting because of revelation. It's shouting because I'm free. It's rejoicing because I'm a free person. Amen. There's liberty in this place. Hallelujah, should be liberty in our lives. Say we should be free to express ourselves how we feel too. Amen. Well, you say I'm quiet. Well, that's fine. If, but don't resent the people who are loud. You say I'm loud. Well, don't resent the people who are quiet. Amen. You should be free to express yourself how you want to express yourself. Because if it's God doing it, it's an order. You know, Billy Paul Brandon would tell the story, and I know I've said it before, but there'd be a woman who would, who would swing her handbag in Branham Tabernacle, and she'd throw it across the church when she got so excited. I've never heard in a tape where Brother Bram said, stop that now, sister, that's wrong. Yeah, that's right. 
Why? Because God was doing it. Yeah. You know, there's stories. I, you know, I heard the other day, Brother Bram, you know, at the end of meetings, he'd take his coat and he'd swing it around and around and around rejoicing. And he'd go outside and swing it around and around rejoicing. Oh, my. We've got to have the right. Amen. We are a free people. Amen. 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 Why? We should shout the voice of triumph. Amen. Hallelujah. We've got the victory. We're on the victor's side. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So here they were. Now, when David became king and the kingdom was established under David, they possessed the fullness of the promised land. They never possessed it in the days of Joshua. They possessed all that was promised through Moses in the kingship of David. So when the king came to the throne, then they took the full inheritance. And it's the same thing today through the church ages where you know, people have gained ground, they've you know, gained a possession. But it's when the king steps forth and takes over that it's no longer church ages but now it's the son of man i mean the king himself stepping into the church and taking over that's when the fullness of the inheritance of the word i mean we receive it Amen. hallelujah i mean under the days of moses they didn't take all the way to the the review fridays so there was parts of the word that they didn't possess but then when david came to the throne and he and he went he went and conquered there and he possessed it Amen. why because the king came to the throne and so now under David, we had people coming into an adoption, right? David instituted the singers, instituted different temple worship, even before there was the temple built. He received the inspiration for the temple to be built. But he began to put things in place that when, when Solomon would finally put the physical temple together, everything was there that the worship could be instituted. So under the kingship of David, people came to their adoption. The mighty men came to their adoption. Now adoption we know is placing in the body, right? So now the mighty men before David came to the throne, they were just Gentiles. They were just vagabonds, destitute, afflicted, whatever they were, in distress, tormented. But then under the anointing that was on David, they came to their position in the body, right? They came to their adoption. Option, yes, just like the sons of Korah, they had a stigma to their name. I remember then David, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, God told him, no, take the sons of Korah, place them in the worship. Amen. Place them in a very influential place. Amen. Where, where their father could not be. Amen. I'm going to put the sons. And I'm going to put the sons there to show that the stigma attached to their name has been scrubbed off. Amen. That I don't see it no more. Amen. But now they are in their position. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. That should make you real happy. Why does it make you feel happy? Because there was a stigma attached to our first nature. Amen. Sin was, you know, we were born with sin nature. We were born in darkness. Doesn't matter who, you're, who you are, what your last name is. Amen. We must be born again. There's got to be, God's got to transform your life and change you. So there's a stigma with our first birth, with our first name. But remember when Brother Bram preached the first seal, he says that you'll understand, I no longer call you church, but I call you bride. Amen. Why does he, why are we no longer called church? Because there's a stigma associated with the name church. Amen. With church, there's a stigma of man's ideas, man's dogma, man controlling man, all those different things going on, hierarchy, politics, whatever it may be. That's all associated with the name church. But he says, no, I'm not calling you that name no more. I'm going to call you bride. You're under a different dispensation now. You're in a different office now. Amen. Because now bride, the bride of Jesus Christ, there's no stigma with that name. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because everything we are, we are because of Him. Yeah. Amen. We no longer have our own identity. Hallelujah. We have His identity. Yes. Amen. Just like when, when Ruth, Ruth came into Israel, she, was, she had a stigma. She was a Moabitess. The law said no Moabite could enter the congregation of Israel. There was a stigma. She was a widow with nothing. Amen. There's a stigma under her mother, you know, you're over her mother-in-law. Don't call me Naomi no more. Call me Mara. My life's become bitter. Why, there's a stigma associated with it. But then when Boaz came, when Boaz came to the field and saw, and saw Ruth there, fell in love with her, hallelujah, amen, and, 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 and took her as wife. I mean, now she had no stigma associated to her name because she was no longer Ruth from Moab. Now she was Ruth of Bethlehem. She was the wife of Boaz. Hallelujah, it's the same thing with us, amen. Our God is taking care of our past. You say, I, I wrestle with a lot of things. Just give it to him. He's already taking care of it. Hallelujah, he's already taking care of your past. You say, well, I've fallen many times. Just get back up. Amen, he's already taking care of it. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Has he not? I mean, when he died on Calvary, he didn't say, well, I, got, you know, I need to die again at the end of the age. I mean, to, to, to take care of all the sins in the future. No, he took care of it all. From, he, from when sin first came in to when sin will end. He took care of it all under that blood. Hallelujah. So if he took care of it all, amen, we just got to have such confidence, Lord. You've done it. You've taken away. The, yeah, the devil tries to put a stigma on us. You did this. You said this. You thought this. You acted this way. Amen. You say, no, devil. That person died. Amen. I'm an overcomer. Amen. I've had overcome you Amen. by the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Remember, this message is a positioning message. It's an adoption message. Amen. If it's adoption message, then therefore we will be placed as the bride of Christ. And I believe now we are being placed as the bride of Christ. We're not looking for a future event now. This word. Amen. It's here to place you in your place. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's something to shout about. Amen. I was once, a, I was once like the sons of Korah. Oh, your daddy did this. Oh, you did this under your first birth. Look at this. Puts a weight on you. Imagine them. Let's not have a family, you know, family union. Whatever, you know, they were they were stuck with this name. They couldn't change this name. But one step to the throne. Hallelujah! They had the sure mercies of David. And, he, and God said, no, 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 no. Don't let them live under that anymore. Amen. Place them here. Amen. Place them here as the worshipers. And I'm going to speak through you psalms, and they're going to receive that inspiration of that psalm. They're going to sing it forth themselves. And the same inspiration that fell upon you is going to fall upon them, and they're going to sing it, and they're going to create an atmosphere, and I'm going to come down and dwell in their praise. Oh, it's the same thing. Amen. God anointed the prophet. Hallelujah. And, and God spoke forth a word. Amen. And then, and then God took us, placed us in our position. We received that word. Hallelujah. The same inspiration falls upon us. Hallelujah. And God comes down among us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I happen to believe that. Because the only way that this message can live is if the same inspiration that it was given in falls upon you. I mean, the same Holy Ghost that anointed that man's lips, Brother Bram's lips to speak it, comes upon you for you to receive it. Hallelujah. And I believe that inspiration is present. It's been here quite a while. Hallelujah. It's been waiting for you. And here you are. Hallelujah. So they came to their adoption. Amen. Under the kingship of David. Now, Brother Bram would say, uh, well, to me, to me, when we, when we, um, when you read through the seal series, it's not, it's not some sermons. It's an event. Amen. He would stand there in the breach and he would go to Revelations 4 and 5 and he would begin to come down to the scripture where it says, and a, and a mighty and a strong angel uh, called. He said, who's worthy to take the book? And he says, maybe I'm just feeling this way. But who? Let him come. Amen. Well, inspiration was coming. And he said every, every day the angel Lord would come into the room and tell him what the seal was. The book would come open to the prophet. To, to be given to us. So, so here it was. What was happening? When John was there up in the eternities, he saw no one was worthy to take the book. One of the elders said, Weep not, John, for the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. The king's prevailed. Amen. And, but when he looked, he saw a lamb. Now to some people, he's king. He's judge. Right? But to the bride, he's lion. I mean, I mean sorry, he's lamb. Amen. I mean, he's both things at once. I mean, but to some he roars out his judgment, but, but to others he shows mercy. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's by our relationship to him he shows us mercy. Amen. We're always part of him. We're always part of his word. Amen. Amen. So, so he's our lamb. He's my sacrifice. He's my high priest. Amen. He's my, he's my propitiation. He's my advocate. He's my husband. He's my, he's my Lord. He's my everything. So now what's happening now is the king is coming forth to take over. What happened when Jesus came the first time? Because remember, the church when Jesus came, or the Old Testament church when Jesus came, it was all, when he came, what they have? Man-made systems, man-made ideas. It was all just the church doing its thing. But then he came, the king, to come to his church. And they didn't want him. Some of them accepted, but most didn't. Why? Because headship was coming to the body. But Israel wouldn't accept it. And then so what happens now in the end time? Headship comes to the body. Hallelujah. 
but there's a body upon the earth to receive it. Amen. Though the majority may not, I mean, there's a prepared people Amen. that will receive the headship of the word Amen. and will become one with him. Amen. And I'm looking at it right now. Amen. Hallelujah. So now here comes the king. He's got the contents of the kingdom. He opens it up and then he begins to speak it forth. And as he speaks it forth now, people are taking their position. Amen. Remember, under the, under the administration of Moses and Joshua, it wasn't just Israel receiving their inheritance or, get, or, or having their place. Moses, they, you know, God tells Moses, here's Moab, leave them alone, just journey through. Different ones, this is their portion. They weren't in the promised land, but they were, you know, they were actually related to Israel through Lot and his daughters and so on. So just leave them where they are. Just keep journeying through. You know, if there's trouble, well, there'll be trouble, but you, you just leave them where they are. Leave the church nominal where they are. Don't fuss at them. Yeah. There's the bride calling. Yeah. They have their place, yeah. right? We have our place. Yeah. I mean, it's just God's grace. We have our place and it's not that place. So never look down on them. Just keep journeying through. Amen. Keep walking with the Lord, right? So it wasn't just Israel receiving their inheritance. They all had their allotment as well. Yeah. Amen. So now, so when the book came open, it wasn't just the bride receiving her lot. The devil's going to the lake of fire. Amen. Right? Remember, it was sitting in there the whole time, but now it's time for it to be manifested. This is who's going to the lake of fire. This is going to receive mercy of the white throne, judgment. The bride won't be judged. Christ took her judgment that day on Calvary. Hallelujah. She's going to be judging the world. Amen. The saints will judge the earth. Right? So everyone receives their portion. Hallelujah. We just happened to receive the best portion. But it's nothing we did. It's God's predestination. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why we should just be glad. Lord, I'm so glad you made me me. And I'm so glad you called me under this word. Hallelujah. Amen. So now the king has come. And now we receive the full inheritance of the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Now. Jesus would say to his disciples, I'm kind of jumping in um, around maybe, but he would say to his disciples after they were sent to, to cast out devils and, and you know, heal the sick and so on, they came back rejoicing. And Jesus would say to them, don't rejoice that you have dominion over unclean spirits, but rejoice rather because your names are written in heaven. Amen. Amen. Now we must understand that, that um, pardon me, uh, Judas was with them. So there's names we know if you, you know, I'm sure we're all familiar with this, but there's, but there's, there's parts of the book of life, amen, or in the book of life that, that names can be rubbed out. And Judas's name was written in heaven, but it was erased. Because his, but his name wasn't in the Lamb's book of life. Right? So now those who are in the Lamb's book of life will not worship the beast. They, it actually says in the book of Revelation that they will have right to go into the city and dwell there. Now the Lamb's book of life we know it's, it, it's a record of names that God thought of before the foundation of the world that they will rule and reign with him. And Jesus is saying, don't rejoice just because of this, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So we should rejoice, not because people are healed necessarily, though that is wonderful, but you should rejoice that your name Amen. is in the Lamb's book of life. Because remember, if it's in there, Brother James sent me a quote, you know, Brother Bram said that no, you know, no rubbing, all the rubbing compound in the earth, Brother Bram said, couldn't take your name off that book. Amen. Hallelujah. So nothing can take. And remember, all those names, amen, the devil can't take. He can't take those names. He can't take those lives. I mean, they are gods. And if they are gods, amen, then nothing can pluck them from his hand. They belong to him. Hallelujah. So now if they are in the, you know, if our names are in that book, I mean, God has to take all claims the devil can put upon us. Amen. And that's why, amen, the blood of Jesus Christ, amen, as I said, takes care of our past, present, and future. Amen. amen. So therefore, there is nothing that he can hold against us because our Lord took care of it all. Amen. Hallelujah. So like the sons of Korah, amen, we can sing praises unto our God. Amen. We can rejoice. Amen. We can say, thank you, Lord. We don't have to live under the stigma of our first birth or what our parents did, whoever did. Amen. But we can rejoice. Amen. Because God, you've placed us in the body to sing praises unto you. Amen. And more than just singers in the temple, amen, but worshipers in spirit and in truth. Amen. The bride of Christ herself. Hallelujah. That's why we should rejoice. Amen. Amen. Isn't it wonderful? God has a record of us in heaven. 
I mean, that's why we've got to understand is, you know, as Brother Bram would say, there's only one form of eternal life, and that's God's life. The Scripture says, who has the Son has life, eternal life. Who has not the Son doesn't have eternal life. And so now, but he said, amen, to, in order to have eternal life, you did not have a beginning. It's, because eternity has no beginning, has no end. So now, when you think about that, it shows us that if, if you have received the Holy Ghost today, I mean, this word has become a living reality in you. I mean, that's actually a vindication to you that you have eternal life. Right. I'm not talking just about an anointing, but when the word comes down into your soul, amen, and you begin to manifest this message today. More than just an anointing. People get anointed, but they've still got their old nature living. But those who have truly surrendered all, yeah. and God lives through them. Oh Hallelujah. Amen. amen. So, it's, so it's showing by receiving the Holy Ghost is actually God saying to you, I'm putting my seal upon you that you would know you're with me from the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. Now, Joshua, I'm just going to go back to Joshua again. Or well, rather, I'm going to read a, a, a definition. This is what I was going to originally um, title this was to be impacted by the supernatural. Now, to be impacted, it means you come into a forcible contact with another object. That's being impacted. And some of us have been impacted by bigger things or lesser things. But we all know what it feels like to be impacted by something. Now, Joshua took the people into the land. And they were instructed, they were instructed to walk around Jericho a certain number of times. Christine and I were having fellowship with this yesterday, I believe it was, or the day before. And, but on the seventh time around, remember, was silence until a certain point, And then the trumpets blew and the people shouted Now, I just, with a great shout. Now, I just want you to think about this. They were under expectation to see the walls come down. Remember, they had just crossed Jordan and it was on dry ground. Imagine, I was just thinking about this rejoicing. Imagine, imagine you, you know, Jordan was in flood in that kind of season. It was, it was the harvest season that they came into, came into the promised land. And so, so its banks were swollen. But then imagine you're walking. So, so you're way in the back somewhere and you're walking over. You come over the hill and you see where the Jordan was and it's dry ground. And you see four priests holding an ark in the middle of the river. You just see this. And you're walking past this. You're walking past and you just see these men. You walk over on dry ground. And then after everyone's crossed, then you see those same four men with the ark come over. And maybe you'd all look back and go, see, where's that river? And it's flowing. Do you ever put yourself, I put myself in Bible stories. Imagine seeing that. And you've already been in the wilderness. You've seen mighty things God has done. That put them in expectation for the walls to come down. I say everything that God has ever, ever done for you, put it in an order. He did all this for me. He's going to do all this for me. I mean, because remember, the works have been finished from the foundation of the world. I mean, so every, every miracle God will ever do to you is say, this long, this list is this long. If he's already done this bit, he has to do this bit. I mean, because the same God that did the stuff in the beginning will do the rest, right? I mean, so here they were, they were under expectation. I don't believe they're walking around saying, what are we doing? They didn't walk around saying, no, no, no. Remember, we crossed that river. It was on dry ground. Jo the same God that was with Moses is with Joshua. That same presence that was with Moses now with this man. He said he met the captain of the host of the Lord and he instructed him what to do and we're walking around. Hallelujah. And we heard the spies report and they said the hearts of all the men have failed because of what God did for us in Egypt. And he'll do it again. You'll do it again, Lord. You'll do it again. Hallelujah, you'll do it again. Lord, you save me, you'll do it again. Save my children. Hallelujah, you heal me once, you'll do it again. You heal me again. Amen. When I'm in financial need, you help me then, you'll do it again. Hallelujah, when I couldn't find my way, you'll do it again. I'll, I'll find my way. Hallelujah. So they walked around under expectation. That's why I say, well, we've got a prayer request. We should be under expectation. Or we've got a trouble or something. We should be under expectation. God's going to fight your battle. Amen. Remember, this is God's bride. We are his bride. He is our husband. We are his wife. Amen. If we're his wife, then we're under his dominion. We're under his care, his protection. He'll guide us through. You say, well, what about the martyrs in the, in the, in the martyr age? They died in faith. Because God wanted to show the devil, doesn't matter what you do to people, they will still believe and love me. 
Hallelujah. Hey, Brother Brown, tell a story. It was about a woman. Um, I, you know, I don't have the quote here, but, but there was a woman in Germany, and, and, and they just had a newborn baby, and the baby was, uh, actually died. And they're calling for Brother Brown to come from the United States, to come to Germany, to pray for the baby, that the baby would come back and live. And now Brother Brown prayed, and the Lord said, no, this is the hand of God. Tell them this is it. And so he relayed that message to the parents. And then a while later, the parents came to America. And then she was asking Brother Brown, was it because of a lack of faith that my baby wasn't raised to the dead? And, and, and he said, no, 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 you have great faith. But he said, no, no, but you still love the Lord anyhow. It's not based on if your baby was raised or not. Because she, she kept walking on loving God anyway, irrespective of what happened. And the prophet said, no, actually, you have great faith. Because your circumstances of what's happened to you in life has not changed your love for God. Amen. Hallelujah. Because remember, having, having the revelation of the hour does not exempt us from trouble. It does not exempt us from trials. It does not exempt us from hardship. I mean, but the revelation of the hour gives us overcoming power that our faith will not waver irrespective of what's going on. Hallelujah. Just like Job. Remember, Job was an extreme case. God just said, to, uh, you know, Satan said to God, well, you just put a hedge around Job. That's why he loves you. And, and God said, well, I'm going to prove you wrong. Amen. And so Job was on his ash heap. He was there all in his trouble. But yet with his mouth, he did not sin against God. Amen. He had great faith. He didn't understand what was going on. And remember, there has never been once in my life where God sat me down and said, okay, this is your next six months. This is what's going to happen to you. Never, never. Because if it was that way, we wouldn't need faith. Right? But God reveals himself to you. And so whatever trouble you can go through, you can walk through it. Irrespective of outcome. Amen. That's not defeatist. Faith is unwavering. Amen. Remember, the devil wants, just like Job, God, I mean, sorry, the devil said to Job, the only reason he loves you is because there's his hedge. And God proved him otherwise. And it's the same thing with us. You say your bride's perfect, there's none like her in all the earth. It's just because you've got the armies of heaven around her, there's a wall of fire. Amen. That's, you know, and God says, no, no, I'll show you. Amen. I showed you in the dark ages, I'll show you today. Amen. Hallelujah. And he does. And he puts us forth. He puts certain people forth as an example of overcoming power. That's, but our walks are all tailor-made. Remember, Job wasn't on the ash heap because he was a secret sinner. Job was on the ash heap because God was proving to Satan the power of the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And he wanted to shout to Job himself. Hallelujah. See, everything works for our good. Now, so they were, so, so here was Israel. They were walking around Jericho under expectation. Then finally there came the final circle of the wall. And the priest blew the trumpet. And the people, when they heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted with a great shout. Now a trumpet has to be fashioned a certain way to give a certain sound. It can't be made every trumpet that uh, the reason it gives a different sound is because it's shaped different. That may be very obvious, but you know, you take a big French horn or a little whatever, they have different shapes. They they make a different sound. Now the gospel is you know, the gospel is the gospel trumpet. It's the trumpet of Jubilee. It's got to be shaped in a certain way. Amen. In order for the sound or the note to be made that's just right. Now it's the same thing with us. Remember, we as as believers, you know. We have to be shaped a certain way in order for the right sound to come out of our lips. I mean, so God has to take us from the world. And it's not the dimensions of your vocal cords I'm talking about. I mean, I'm talking about now when God takes you, he justifies you, sanctifies you, and fills you with the Holy Ghost. Now you can make the right sound. Before that, maybe you could sing the same songs as everyone else and maybe sing a lot better than those who actually know the Lord. But there comes a time when you meet him and it may sound the same, but there's an anointing that travels now on your, on your song or on your prayer. I mean, so it actually to God sounds different. Why? Because the trumpet has been, has been shaped the right way. Now, but in order for a trumpet to blow, there's got to be a force, got to be a breath Amen. that passes through the trumpet. Yeah. Amen. So now we know the Holy Ghost is the breath of God. Amen. He breathed on his disciples. He said, receive you the Holy Ghost. Yeah. So now they received a force. They were impacted. Amen. Amen. By the life of God. You say a breath went into them. 
What is inspiration? Part of the definition of inspiration is, is actually like breathing in. Amen. You receive something. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But so, so now there has to be a force. There's got to be a life. Go through the trumpet in order to make the sound. Amen. So it's the same thing with you and I. The breath of God has to dwell in us. Amen. That when we begin to praise God or we begin to say, no, God can do it again. Amen. God's here. He's in charge. He'll take care of us. Amen. He'll be our boss. He'll supply our needs. He'll fight our battles. Amen. Whatever thing we're facing right now, he's in charge of it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's more than able. Amen. Amen. You begin to confess that, then God, God hears a different kind of sound. Because he like, you know, he loves to see us confess his word. He likes us to have a positive confession. Amen. Hallelujah. He likes to see his children begin to have fellowship and they they will say, Our God's alive. He's risen. Hallelujah. He's cleansed me from all my sin. Amen. Sure, the devil's on my case, but God's on my case. God's on. I'm on the Lord's side. Amen. Hallelujah. He's here to fight my battle. My children are coming in. My family's coming in. Prodigals are coming home. Hallelujah. He likes to hear that kind of a confession. That's why I always think positive. Always speak positive. Amen. Yeah. You know the old saying, if you've got nothing good to say, say nothing at all. Amen. Amen. We should only speak good. Hallelujah. So now God took a gospel trumpet. God fashioned a trumpet in this hour. He went through many trials until finally the sword landed in his hand in Sabino Canyon. But now the trumpet was ready. Amen. Hallelujah. Now there was a life came into that trumpet and it blew forth a jubilee. Yeah. Amen. That all who heard that sound of the gospel trumpet can go free. Amen. So now that's why the message came because it's the jubilee trumpet. Yeah. Hallelujah. A life force was pressing through it. Hallelujah. But then when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted with a great shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why is there shouting? Why is there noise? What happens with noise? You, you just take the devil knows how this works. That's why you see his entertainment. People get excited. They get relaxed first. They begin to enjoy it. They get unto the spirit of it. And then he can inject his doctrine, his life into them. People go to rock concerts. They get caught up in the music, whatever concert it is. What? They begin to enjoy it. There's the lights, the sound, everything. Then the spirit that travels on that music comes upon the people because he knows how it works. But remember, he's just a perverter, right? So he takes what God does, makes a perverted copy of it to achieve his own ends. Amen. Why do we have camps and, and different things and God, you know, everyone shouts and rejoices, has a wonderful time. It's, well, it shouldn't be just emotion. It shouldn't just be excitement because other people are doing it. It should be because God's moving on your soul to do it. Right? But what happens in that kind of atmosphere? We relax. Right? We relax. We begin to enjoy it. We get into the spirit of the meeting and God can now work. Amen. Brother Bram said about, about iron. It's like in order to shape iron, you've got to heat it up first. If you try and smash it with a, with, a, with a blacksmith hammer, you just shatter it. But if you get it hot enough, then you can shape it to what it needs to be. It's the same thing when the Spirit of God moves. What's happening is putting heat, putting heat into the iron. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so we can be shaped into the image of His Word. Yes, Amen. That's why we shouldn't come to... That's, why do you think, you know, from wherever you live, so from there, for me, to here, it's all tense, mind battles, you know, all these things. Why is that? Because the devil's trying to get me all tense that I can't enter into the service? Is it just me? <laughs> and, then, and then if we sit there with that mind battle and we, have, you know, we, and, we, and we sit through the service all that way, what's happening? And we're all quiet and we're just, all oh, this is going on and these people, what's happening? You could use a cold bit of iron. But God wants you to come out of that thing. Amen. That's why we have trouble. But that's why we shout. Amen. That's why we raise our hands and say, Lord, you're so lovely. You're so good. I'm so thankful in spite of me. You called me. You saved me. You redeemed me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's how we should be. Yes, you say, well, you're a bit Pentecostal. The Pentecostal church I was in before I came to the message, they did not believe in raising their hands. I was telling Brother Andy, he was shocked <laughs> about that. That's true. They did not believe in raising their hands. They believed that wasn't right. So you can imagine what kind of church it was. Amen. So it's not because I'd seen it somewhere else. I'm happy because I've been redeemed. 
I shout because he means everything to me. I rejoice because his word is true. And I have more confidence in him now than I ever have. I'm not looking for amens per minute or people on their feet. No, I'm looking. God is alive. Amen. What birthed you was an atmosphere. What birthed you was an atmosphere. Brother Ram said you can take a chicken's head, put it under a pup, the right temperature, it'll hatch a chicken. Right, so the same thing with an eagle. You put an eagle egg in the, in the right atmosphere, an eagle will be birthed. I mean, so the right atmosphere was needed for us to be born. How much our children? Amen. Isn't that right? That's why I say, Lord, come, not just in church, live in my house. Should be such an atmosphere around us. Lord, you're alive. Lord, you're so wonderful. Lord, hallelujah. That's how it should be, shouldn't it? An atmosphere. The right atmosphere will bring the right results. Holy, remember we have the mechanics, the sp we have the Word, but we have the dynamics and the Holy Ghost. They are coming together in this end time. When Brother and Priest are rising of the sun, they said you need both coming together. Amen. 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 That's why, you know, I find it strange, and, and, and I've always found this strange. When people preach about miracles, other people think, well, they're just not preaching the opening of the Word. And then when people preach the opening of the word, other people think, well, they're just not preaching the supernatural power of God. For some reason, it's always been that way. This is what I found. Maybe it's just my little you know, your observation. People preach the power of God. Others look at it and say, oh, they just don't know the third pull. Or they're just not preaching the opening of the word. But the supernatural is in the opening of the word. The supernatural is in the opening of the word. I mean, when David came to the throne, the power of God was there. Amen. When the sword landed in the prophet's hand, amen. Brother Brown said, there's more things happening in the supernatural now. I just don't have time to tell you about it. Amen. Under the opening of the word. Hallelujah. So it's the same. That's how it should be. The angel of the Lord, Brother Brown says, follows the message of the hour. Wherever the message of the hour is, the angel of the Lord is there to fulfill that message. Amen. So under the third pull is the opening of the word. Right? It opens our eyes, gives us an understanding who we are. Amen. Who we are, not who we shall be, who we already are. Amen. We just step into that image. Amen. Right? So the, so the word came open. You're the bride of Christ. When he preached in visible union, I don't hear all him blasting all the people who are living in denomination. I just hear him say, you're sinless. You're virtuous. You never did in the first place. You had a wedding band of unmerited pre predestined grace on your finger. Hallelujah. You already, already had the wedding band. Hallelujah. You already had it on you. You just got to come. Your eyes just got to come open and say, Lord, this is what you've made me to be. Hallelujah. Amen. When Brother Ram would, 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 would preach spiritual amnesia and he'd talk about the soldier that was shell shocked from the battle. And he says, part of amnesia is actually be, you get amnesia by being between two opinions. Is the world right? Is the word right? Is this message right or what? You know, people get between two opinions and they forget who they are. He's saying about the about the soldiers, they were on their way to a um, mental institution, whatever they call it, and they were being, being, being uh, uh, transported by rail, and, and, the, and the soldiers that had the amnesia, they, they got out of the railway carriage, and the guards were watching them, and one, one of them began to start looking around. This is more than a story. I was on my way to a mental institution. Didn't know who I was, didn't know where I'm going, didn't know where I'm from, but I began to look around. But then I begin to look around and I begin to see familiar places, something in me identified. I am Ruth. I am Esther. I am Rahab. Hallelujah. I am David. I'm his mighty men. I can see myself as Peter, James, and John. I can see myself as John on the Isle of Patmos. I can see myself in the New Jerusalem. Hallelujah. And what happened? The amnesia began to break. And then now the one who wrote the book comes out, just like the father, the soldier with the amnesia, he begins to walk. The guards say, just, just let him walk. Just let him walk. And that's why young people begin walking through the scripture. Just let them walk. Walk through the message. You'll find who you are. Hallelujah. He begins to walk and they follow him. And then finally he comes to a house. And then an old man comes out the porch and, and gives him a big hug. says, son, I knew you'd come home. Hallelujah. And his amnesia broke and he thought, this is who I am. I mean, the shell shock was gone. Hallelujah. It's got to be the same way with you and I. Well, I begin to see myself in the word. Then he stepped forth. I knew you'd come home, son. Hallelujah. Now I begin to see who I was. Hallelujah to God. 
Don't let the stigma of your past hold you back. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He could have said this. Oh, I, I was one shell shock. The father didn't care. The amnesia broke your home. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's why this word should be such something to you. It just sounds like home to me. Amen. Hallelujah. In spite of my past, in spite of whatever stigma, it feels like home. Hallelujah. And the reason it feels like home is because it is home. And God through it is calling you home. Never ever forget it. Well, we've got trials and troubles in life. No, I've been called. I didn't call myself. No one else called me. God called me. God found me. You say, but your parents were believers. No, but one day... And they weren't at that time. But one day, God found me. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember, it's your walk. It's your walk with God. Amen. It's not someone else's walk. Amen. You say, well, I've just started walking. Amen. Keep stepping. Amen. I keep falling over. Just like when the girls started to learn to walk. They didn't just get up one day and start running along and skipping. They held on to things. They were walking along. And what did I do? Go. We're encouraging them. Daddy's proud of you. You can do it. Amen. You can do it. And then their legs begin to, muscles begin to grow. They begin to get stronger, balance. And then they, would, then they would let go. They would launch out into space almost. <laughs> oh, my. Then they were really going. They fell over more when they launched out when they were holding on to things. Right. And sometimes we've got to hold on to the framework of the church. Amen. Right? People hold on to certain things, but then you've got to let go. Amen. And you've just got to walk with God. Amen. Hold on to that unseen hand. And then eventually you go from falling over, then you're up. When a child learns to walk and they fall over, do you ever see a parent in their right mind berating them? You're useless. You, well, you, you, know, you, know, you never ever see that. Do you think God beats us because we fall down? Because the devil, you know, older siblings, they'll just kind of put their foot out, you know. Not that the devil's our older sibling, but you know what I mean? You know, the devil trips us up sometimes. You know, the first thing when a child hurts himself, what do parents do? Pick them up. Are you okay? Is everything fine? Calms them down, it's okay, you know, let them go on their way. That's all the Lord wants to do with us. Amen. But I fell, Daddy. Don't worry about the stigma of falling. Amen. It doesn't matter. Amen. Get up. Hallelujah. You're all fine. Hallelujah. Patch you up, whatever you need. Just walk on. Amen. Continue on. That's, how it's, that's what God wants with us. Amen. He never, ever, ever holds our past against us. Amen. Never. Amen. He never purchased our salvation just to hold it in the, well, if they get naughty enough, I'm going to bring this out. That's not how he works. He took care of it. Remember, he took all of your sin and your shame. He says, I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to carry it up Calvary. I'm going to take it down to hell for you. That you don't need to carry it no more. I'll take that stigma. Give it to me. I'll take care of it. Hallelujah. That's how he is. And then we, when we come back to him, then we're walking with this condemnation. Man, I wish I could. Why am I still, why am I still a son of Korah? My father did this. My, my, you know, I did this. And God looks at us and says, I don't remember that. Why are you carrying that? Why are you carrying your past? I don't remember your past. The past, the only past I remember of you is when you're shouting and rejoicing before the foundation of the world. That's what I remember. Remember, that's eternal. There's no time. Amen. Right? So what you were then, you'll be there. Amen. Hallelujah. So he says, that's all I remember of you. Amen. And that's what you're going to be. Yes, sir. So don't carry. We wrestle with our humanity. I'm glad people said, yep, because I say, maybe it's just me. But God made you a certain way. God gave you your personality. He didn't want us all to be like, God is not a cookie cutter. Right? You say, well, I... You say, well, I don't want to be so emotional. God made you emotional. Amen. Amen. You know, God made you how you are. We've got to be comfortable in our own skin. Yes. I remember singing in uh, what Bible for schools at primary school, thank you, Father, for making me me. And when you're this age, you're just singing it. You don't realize, oh, yes, you know, everything's fine. But when you get to a certain age and you see the flaws in your character, yes. it's a bit harder to sing. But God made you you for a reason. And we have to come to peace with that. Lord, you made me with my personality for a reason. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So they blew the trumpets. They shouted. Hallelujah. And the more the walls came down, I believe, the more they shouted. Amen. Why? Because they began to crumble and it fell down flat. 
Hallelujah. And it should be the same thing with us. Amen. Under an, going from expectation to a rejoicing. Hallelujah. Amen. We're on our way home, friends. We're on our way home. This is, this is next stop is home. Next stop is heaven. Remember, think of everything that the Lord has ever done for you. Amen. If he did all that, imagine them going around Jericho. They weren't allowed, maybe when they went back to camp, they'd have testimony meeting. Remember what it was like when the death angel came? Some of them, Joshua and Caleb were there. They'd say, no. You know, they put the blood on the door and lintel. There was great screams that night. But there's no scream in our houses. Because the blood was applied. We were safe. Amen. We can let off the pressure. Yes. And then the, 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 then the next morning, whenever it was, we walked out of Egypt. Caleb, do you remember what that was like? It was so great. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're walking free. Amen. And then we went to the Red Sea. Oh my, we were there. There's great distress among the people. But Moses said, these Egyptians that you see, you won't see them again. Amen. And then we were there. The pillar of fire was behind us, kept us as a buffer between us and our enemy. And then he lifted his staff and the Red Sea opened. I've never seen that happen before in my life. Hallelujah. And then we walked over dry land. Amen. Hallelujah, dry land. Hallelujah. And then we got to the other side. Amen. I'm just... We talk about what God has always done. You've got to have a testimony service. The same God that met them has met you. Maybe different dispensation, but the same God there is the same God here. And then so they walked across dry land. And then now we saw the Egyptians coming after us. Then Moses lifted his staff and the sea came back over. Hallelujah. And then we realized our enemy was dead. And then an 80-something-year-old woman lifted up a tambourine and she began to rejoice. Miriam was not a young, ch young sister. She was old and she led them in worship. Imagine a million people shouting and praising God. Hello, on the river. You're, you're, you're on the sea bank because their enemy was dead. Imagine that. Hallelujah. And then we came to the waters of Marah. It was bitter. But Moses found a tree. He was inspired. He cut it down. It became sweet. So sure, there was a bitter part in our walk. But, but the cross, you put it in with the cross, it became a sweet experience. Then we walked on a bit more and God fed us out of the heavens and God came down on Sinai. What a presence that was. You remember Joshua? Oh my, I remember jo Caleb. Then we went into the land. I may be skipping a few things, but remember, testimony. You got to think, what has God done for you? There's a reason. Caleb, why did he do that for us? We've got an inheritance. Remember Caleb going over and looking at that mountain and you said, I want that one. Hallelujah. Have you ever gone into a store and you can buy whatever you want? I haven't, but that'd be cool. Right? That was like that going to the land. Remember, they're looking. There's an inspiration coming upon them. They're identifying themselves with the part of the land that's theirs. So there's now a burden on Caleb saying, that's mine. And then he comes back and they come back with the grapes and all those things. And Caleb says, I'm seeing where I'm living. <laughs> it's a mountain. And he begins to tell his children about it. They begin to have fellowship. Day after day after day, and the promise just gets greater and greater and greater. Why is it getting greater? Because God told Moses, for one year, for every day that the spies search out the land, you'll be in the, you'll be in the wilderness. So, so 40 years. So after year number one, Caleb says, children, 39 years to go. Next year, 38. I'm not going to go all the way down to zero, but you know what I mean. And the expectation would have got greater and greater because the promise was getting more real. And more real and more real. And it's the same thing with this rapture. It's getting more real and it's getting closer. And God's getting us ready. And we're going to leave this world. Hallelujah. The expectation. You know, many people say, oh, it's been years. Hallelujah. It's been years. We're close. Amen. We're on our way. And the expectation gets greater. Why? Because the Lord's getting us in condition. It's not us getting ourselves in condition. I mean, what happened when, when, when Brother Bram, you know, he saw, he saw the preview of the bride. Yeah. And those ones that were in European garments, they were, they were walking off the trail because they were looking at the wrong thing. Yeah. But he cried out, stay in line. Yeah. Why? Because their focus was coming off what they should have been following. Yeah. Right? And it's got to be the same thing with us. We're being led by the pillar of fire. Yeah. I mean, this message, I mean, this is a pillar of fire leading us. Yeah. Right? But if we keep our, take our eyes off and look at other stuff. We get out of step. And that's even if you look at yourself, you get out of step. Because I've got this problem and this is going on. Sure, all those things may be there, but look at him. 
Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher. Not looking unto yourself. Amen. And then now finally. Here we came. Caleb. Yes, Joshua. Hallelujah. We're going into the land now. Then Caleb's 84 years old. No doubt he would relate those testimonies over and over and over again. And he'd tell his children, God told me I'm going to take this mountain. Yes. God told me. Amen. It wasn't even my desire. God came and said, you know your desire you have for that mountain? You'll have that. Yes. That burden you have for that mountain, it's yours. Yes. And then he was 84 years old and he comes to Joshua. Joshua, he begins to testify to him. I wasn't like the other spies. We believed it's ours. I've been fighting all these years. Now give me my mountain. Amen. And an 84-year-old man. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Joshua said, it's yours. You can take that now. Amen. Hallelujah. There he goes. And the thing is what? He got that mountain. Because he kept that promise in front of him. It's mine. And he was under expectation. It's mine. Amen. The stigma... Of the wilderness yeah. was gone. Yes, right. Amen. Now, how about your stigma? Yeah. Right. I'm going to leave it there. Jesus is taking care of it. Yeah. He said, I came from a terrible background. That don't matter. Yeah. That's irrelevant. Yeah. Don't ever let it hold you back. I'm going through big things. Don't worry about it. Amen. 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 Keep pressing the battle. Amen. Hallelujah. And everything will be fine. Let's read that again. Let's go to Psalms. Let's read that. Um, let's read this all together as we, and then we'll, um, if the musicians could, they come. Let's, say, um, let's, let's read Psalm 47. Amen to the chief musician of Psalm for the sons of Korah. This is for you. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not just to you to sing. It's for you. Hallelujah. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. We've got the victory. I mean, we're not on the loser's side. We're on the winner's side. Hallelujah. We've got victory in the camp. Victory in our camp. Hallelujah. The Lord's taking care of our sin, our shame, our past. Hallelujah. He's taking our stigma away. Glory to God. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He's a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. Every demon power is under your feet. Amen. He shall subdue them under your feet. Hallelujah. He shall choose our inheritance for us. The excellency of Jacob whom he loved. Selah. Hallelujah. He's chosen your inheritance. Why did the book come open? Because God said, I'm going to tell you what your inheritance is. Not just tell you, you're going to receive it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sing praise. Oh, sorry, where are we? God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our Lord, unto our King. Sing praises. Hallelujah. Amen. What does that mean? Don't sing funeral march. Sing praises. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. Never has a people upon all the earth had the revelation that the bride has in this hour. Amen. Amen. Remember, John was about to write the thunders. God said, seal it up till the time of the end. Amen. Hallelujah. Now what? The thunder, Brother Brown said, was asked, what are the seven thunders? Are they the revelation of the seven seals? He says, yes. The seven thunders are the revelation of the seven seals. Amen. So what John was forbidden to release to the church has been released to us. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. So we can sing praises, sing ye praises with understanding. God reigneth over the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of God of Abraham. For shields of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand. Glory to God. Amen. Isn't he wonderful to us? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. He's taken away our stigma, our shame, our guilt. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe the report of the Lord for me. Not just for anyone, just for me. He's taken my stigma away. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Let's just pray together, shall we, then if the musicians could come after that. Almighty God, we want to give you praise. Lord, what a burden that must have lifted off the sons of Korah. Lord, to have that stigma for maybe generations until, until Father, they were positionally placed in the body under the headship of David. Oh, my God, I want to thank you. You've taken our stigma away. You've taken our past away, oh, God. You've taken our guilt away, our shame, my God. Hallelujah to your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you for cleansing us of it, oh, God. Father, thank you, Lord. You no longer call us church, but you call us bride. Glory to your name, oh, God. Father, I just pray, dear Lord, that you would just lift us up, oh God, into heavenly places. Dear Lord, when the devil tries to bring our past against us, any guilt or shame or condemnation, Father, Lord, may we just remind him, Lord Jesus, that your blood is taking care of it, oh God. Father, Lord, that he's a liar and the father of it, and he is a defeated being. Oh, Lord, thank you for taking care of us, oh God. Thank you, Lord, you'll do it again. Lord, as you saved us, oh God, you've done incredible things already, Lord. You'll, con you'll continue, oh God. Father, battles we face, even now, you'll do it again, Lord. You'll do it again. Glory to your name, my Lord Jesus. Father, may you bless each one here, my God. Father, we just want to commit them into your hands, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Can we have the musicians, please? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. amen. Let's... um. I just want to sing, thank you, thank you, Lord, for saving me. We'll come to Jubilee too, but yeah. Let's sing, thank you, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What key are we doing? That one. Oh, thank you, thank you, Lord, for saving me, saving, saving me. Oh, thank you, thank you, Lord, for setting me free. Oh, once I was lost, now I am found. Hallelujah, glory bound. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Oh, thank you, thank you, Lord, for saving me, saving, saving me. Oh, thank you, thank you, Lord, for setting me free. Oh, once I was lost, now I am found. I'm glory bound. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for saving me. You came into my life and set me free. Oh, you came into my life and you set me free. You came into my life and you set me free. Oh, I was out there without a care. Now I know my Lord is there. Came into my life and you set me free. Let's go sleep. All oh, bound, oppressed, tormented, sick, all laid. Oh, the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. You won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, thank you, Lord. Saving me. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for setting me free. Oh, once I was lost, but now I am found. Hallelujah, glory bound. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Just one more time. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Oh, thank you, thank you, Lord, for setting me free. Oh, once I was lost, but now I'm found. Hallelujah, I'm glory bound. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Is, is um, Brother Chris and Sister Cherith back there?
They're going on a sabbatical to Auckland. A sabbatical. Are they, are they there, Brother Kabir? Are they busy? I'd like to pray for them before they go. If not, that's fine. Okay, okay, let's just sing Jubilee, shall we? Actually, I'd like to sing that song, um, You Chose Me. Do we have that song, You Chose Me, in the system? Such a one condemned as us. I thought we were there. Would have no part in and I die. But thou, O Lord, it's like the pray for you before you. Yeah, back again. Took my place. You took my place. You took my place. I mean, let's just, so as I said, Brother Chris, Sister Cherith are going on a sabbatical to Auckland. They're not leaving, praise the Lord. So I'd just like to pray for you before you go, and yeah, may the Lord bless you and keep you while you're up there. And yeah, we'll miss you. We'll look forward to you coming home, eh? Amen. So let's bow our heads, shall we? Lord Jesus, we want to thank you, dear God, for Brother Chris, Sister Cherith, Lord. Liam and, and Lena, my Lord Jesus. Father, I just ask, dear God, your blessings would be upon them. Father, as they go up to Auckland for these nine months, Lord, as Brother Chris is at school, Lord, may you anoint him, my God. Father, may all the studies go well. And Lord, we want to pray for the family, Lord, Sister Cherith and the children, Lord, as they're up there as well, Lord, going through a transition, Lord, with a new baby, also for a new home for a little bit, Lord. I pray you bless their stay up there. Father, keep them safe, oh God. May your spirit ever be with them, my Lord. And Father, we look forward to them coming home to us, my God. May you keep them safe, Lord. We just commit them into your hands. We thank you, Lord, that their lives are already in your hands, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 God bless you. Bless you. Amen. Let's go from the top, shall we? Oh, were it not for thy nail-scarred hands. Nail scarred hands and thorny bands were it not for thy love for me. Oh, yes, unfailing love that shows Calvary, then such a one condemned as I.
said it all You chose me to be the one that you would die for The one that you would save The one that you would carry from the cradle to the grave The one that you would care for The one that you would raise The one that you chose and you're glad he chose you amen. amen let's just sing as we go on our jubilee and uh, just a reminder there's a choir practice at 1 30 this afternoon amen. amen hallelujah years and years i lay
thank you, Lord, for giving us an anointed pastor, Lord Jesus, that will preach the word and quicken our souls, Lord God. Lord, it's such an honor and a privilege, Lord, to be under, Lord, such a ministry, Lord God. Mm. Oh, Lord, as we go, Lord, may you give us strength, Lord, to act upon the word. Lord, anything in our lives that, Lord, that may be lacking, Lord Jesus, may we not hold, Lord, our, may our past, Lord Jesus, not weigh us down. Oh, Lord, give us strength, Lord, throughout the week. Lord, may we all have a good week, a productive week, Lord Amen. Jesus. Lord, help us to keep meditating on your word, Lord, throughout. Yes, and Lord, may you give us, Lord, grace to come back on a Wednesday, Lord God, to hear some more of your word, Lord Jesus. All this we ask in the precious name. Amen. 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 God bless you, God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Praise you. Jesus Christ.
I see the bright light shine It's just about old time I can see my father standing at the door This world has been a wilderness I'm ready for the I see the bright light shine. It's just a matter of time. I can't see my father standing at the door. This world has been a wilderness. I'm ready for the living. Lord, I've never been this home. There's a light in the window. There's a light in the window. The table spread with splendor. Someone standing by the open door. I can see the crystal river. Oh, I must be.
I can see my father standing 